Hey, and welcome back to the Let's Learn series. Last week we looked at creating and running our very first script, and since I think it's truly invaluable to be able to create and write your own scripts, we're gonna look more in depth at creating these scripts, and we'll even look at creating our first hacking script. Let's jump in. Now, before we can make hacking script, there's a few things we need to cover first. Let's start by opening up the script we made last week. Running this script makes the terminal read back, hello hacker. Let's edit the script so that it interacts with the user. For this, we're gonna to need to use a variable. You can think of a variable as a storage container. The container will hold whatever you tell it to hold. Let's get some practice with this. I wanna change the script to say, hello, and then ask me for a name. I'll add onto it another echo line, which will say, what should I call you? And now I want the terminal to read whatever the user inputs and store in a variable called name. We literally are telling the terminal to read the input. So now the terminal knows what to call us. Let's add a message that repeats the name back to the user. Add another echo command. In quotes, we will put welcome and then establish that we want it to repeat the stored name here by using the dollar sign followed by the variable name, which was name. And then you can add whatever message you want. I'm just going to put to the start of your hacking journey. Great, so let's save and see how the script runs. Execute the file as we did before, and when the terminal prompts you to give a name, give it something to go with. And we see that the terminal should output the message correctly. Now that we understand how variables work, we can move on to some more exciting and useful scripts. To start, let's get some familiarity with the grep command and its uses. Remember, you can always use the help or manual command to learn more about the uses of tools you aren't familiar with. I've put together a few exercises that will help us get hands-on practice with using grep. Let's create the document that we will practice with. Using the command line, open a new file with your text editor. I'm going to name the file grepsample.txt. Then open your browser. I have provided a text sample that we can use hosted on GitHub. Navigate to the repository. A link will be provided in the description. When you get to the page, you'll see a bunch of text. Select all the text in a box and copy it. You'll want to paste it into the new file you created and save the file. Let's say you've been provided with this file and your job is to find the secret hidden within it. The file is small enough to where you could probably look through it and find it, but that may take some time and it would be easy to overlook. Instead, let's use grep to help us find it more efficiently. Using the command grep secret with an asterisk so it gives us all the results close to that. Doing so immediately gives us the secret code we are looking for. Most commonly, grep is used to filter outputs of other commands. For example, we can narrow down the output of a log search. Let's look at that. First, let's take a trip into the directory that contains all our log files. Here we can look at several of the logs that are captured by our device. For instance, we see the auth.log file, which logs information when you log into the system. The btmp file records failed attempts at logging in, and as you can see, there are a ton of other logs being captured. It's a good idea to get yourself familiar with these logs, but for now, let's just use the auth.log for the purpose of this lesson. First, let's open the auth.log and see what the file looks like. We see it lists a ton of information about the login and authentication process. So let's say for some reason we need to look at the log information of one particular day. So what we'll want to use is grep to filter out the output of the file when we use cat. We'll start with the command the same, cat auth.log, but we'll use what's called a pipe key to tell the terminal to send out the output of the command to the next command we're going to be using. The pipe key is the same key as the backslash, so you shift and press that key. Now we use the grep command to filter the information. Let's look for log info for April 18th, grep April 18th. But we need to do one more thing here. We'll need to include the A switch because it will instruct the terminal to read this binary file as a text file. For now, all you need to know is that a binary file means it's not purely a text file. When we run it, we'll see it pulls all the data matching our criteria for our file. We can even filter it even further. We can use the W switch for words and we'll use it to search for open. Running this command, we see our filters using grep have gotten us a much easier amount of data to work with. Now, let's combine all that we have learned to make our first hacking script. We'll be making a tool that will help us scan all open ports on a given IP address. Let's open a new file to work this in. 
I use the SH extension. It's not required to include, but it helps for identification purposes. We need to start it as we did the last script, with a shebang and directing which interpreter we want to use. And we'll also add a comment that explains what the script will do. Mine will say, this script returns open ports on a host network. Now, we are going to work with the InMap tool. InMap is used to identify if a system is connected to a network and which ports it has open or shut. This can help us determine which services are in use, which will lead us to finding vulnerabilities in that system. It is a very useful tool to become familiar with. Let's just run InMap by itself to see it in action. Type in InMap, followed by the IP address you want to check. It's very important to remind you here that you should only be scanning IP addresses you have permission to scan. This is the basics on ethical hacking. There are so many websites out there that allow you to practice on, there's absolutely no reason you'll need to use a website you don't have permission to scan. The IP address I will be using for this is inmap.org, which everyone has permission to use for the purposes of learning on how to hack and to practice on. This command is very simple, just inmap followed by the IP address. It may take a moment to run, but when it's finished, it shows us a whole list of information about the IP addresses. Mainly, it found several ports open and some filtered ports. So let's modify this scanner so it'll give us only the open ports. Looking back at our script, we need to add the inmap command. For now, we'll just put the IP address in the script to make sure it works. Later, we can edit it to be used across other IP addresses. We use the ST switch to perform a TCP scan on the address we've provided. We use the P switch to tell which port to run. For now, let's use SSH since we already saw earlier that the website we were checking on has that port open. The next step is a little different. We will use a redirect to send the standard output of a scan to the slash dev slash null directory on our machine. This is a stealthy way of running the scan so the output disappears, and we also want it to send it there in a greppable format, so we use the OG switch. And then we name the file. Let's name it port scan. Now, we want to grep the output to only show us the results for open ports. To do this, we will want our terminal to read the results back to us. So we'll type cat port scan, piping it through grep to show only lines that include open in it, and redirect it to a new file called port scan results. And finally, we have the terminal read those results to us using cat. The script is complete, so let's make the script executable and run it. And here we see the script work like a charm. Fast, clean, clear, and concise info. And next week we'll look at making the script work for all types of ports and on any IP addresses. Again, grep is a great tool to get comfortable with. If you'd like to get some practice, check out the bonus challenge I made. You can find it on my GitHub repository of the series. And that wraps up this week's episode. Let me know in the comments if you're able to complete the bonus challenge or if you have any suggestions for the series. And you can join us in the community discord for more challenges like that or just to chat. I really hope you enjoyed this video and until next time, I'll see you next video.